Well, today is kind of a slow day. Everyone is off doing their own little things for today. And what I'm gonna try and tackle is putting this extension back up onto here. It broke off last winter. I think first it got broke, partially broken trying to move a rock pile. And then Preston finished breaking it off last winter, pushing snow. I don't know how that happens. So getting these things unbolted here. To take this half of it off, to then try and re-weld onto this thing. Well, I have found out that I do not have what it takes to bend this steel. So as I wait for someone that does have what it takes to bend the last one of these straights, I'm gonna start grinding these out to re-weld them together until I get someone to help me bend the last one. I suppose safety first. Man, these suckers are dark. I suppose it's probably not a good thing that I'm throwing all the sparks up here into oil cans, is it? I think we'll be fine. Back to business as usual. That looks decent. Now let's do the other side. Well, I got each side of this thing ground down. Same with this side. So that way when it goes together, since the metal's so thick, there's a valley in there that I can fill back up with weld to hopefully make it a little bit stronger. I'm not no professional welder, but we're gonna see how this goes. Well, I went to go start welding this, and I got the um, tacks put on there, and then the wire quit coming out, and I thought it was that my tip had got plugged up, but I took it off, and my tip is fine. So then I came over to the welder, and I discovered that this is doing this. And it's going up behind here and tangling in there. Oh, so I got this mess I gotta figure out. Well, I removed the spool, the spool, and got it rewound on there. I got it back on there, but there was kind of some kinks in it. Like there was one here and another one back here. I got it as straight as I could, but kind of just crossed my fingers and hoping that that'll go through the machine. There's only one way to find out. Fire it back up. It looks like it's gonna work. I also have a really long tail here. Okay, now to put this end back together. So evidently, you gotta make sure you keep your GoPro camera far enough away when you're welding and grinding and stuff because these things are very flammable and it caught on fire. I got three of them welded back together and plated it on the one side. Now I'm just gonna wait for someone else that's a little bit bigger to help me bend the last one of these things straight and then I'll get that one welded up. And this thing should be good to go back on the bucket. But hopefully, this won't break off pushing snow again. We're doing some more machinery shuffle. Gotta get another combine washed up. And we got the fancy 8R all washed up here. Now they're getting the inside cleaned out. Cameron's pulling in the 7R here. So they can clean. This is kind of our detailing station here. Just got this all washed up. We didn't get it a good scrub down, but I got our pressure washed up pretty good. So this ripper, we were borrowing to see if it'd work on our excavator for getting the rocks out is our neighbors. He has a large excavator as well. We want, he was maybe gonna sell this. We wanted to see how we liked it. And so we borrowed it to see if it works, but we don't like it. So now that we're done with it, I'm gonna unhook it and bring it back. We're ending up, we ended up finding a company that will cost to make one exactly how we want it with the spacing of the ripper and the strength that we want it for. So I think that's the direction we're going. And we got one of those on order for next spring. So hopefully we can get a lot of rock done though. We've been on the long, slow process of just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. I got that combine pretty much washed up. I still gotta do the auger. George and Alex are here working on one of the 450s detailing the interior. 
We got the 7R back here all cleaned up and detailed the cab. The carpet needs to be put back in. Same with the 8R, she's looking nice and pretty. Cameron's been working on welding up the payload here for quite a while. We kind of broke the bucket, or I kind of broke the bucket a while ago. The little top thing so you can add a little bit more on. So he's well, got it all welded up, now I gotta get it mounted. The scissor lift helps make a lot easier work with these taller pieces of equipment getting them nice and clean. Otherwise, you just can't reach. But when it doesn't want to work, it's not very nice. For some reason, it's like locked in like not movable mood, uh, mode, I don't know. It won't move and I don't know why. Like it's, it does the thing, but it's like locked so it's, it won't transport. I even tried powering it off and powering it back on. I don't know, I think I just need to let it sit here for a little bit and let it think about its feelings. While I let that think about itself, I think I'm gonna help Alex here for a little bit on the 450. Can't forget to maintenance our ropes too. I gotta get this thing all washed up nicely. Well, now that we let the scissor lift have some time to think about what it's done, maybe now it'll work. Please work. Oh, it's moving. Not sure why that fixed it, but, oh, and now it's not moving again. Piece of junk. Maybe the battery's just low on this lift here and it doesn't want to work, so I got it plugged in. I'm gonna get on the floor scrubber and scrub the floor. It's always nice working in a clean environment. a big pellet. I'll tell you what, it's super nice having a floor scrubber, or a floor sweeper, and a scrubber that I'm on. Now the best thing about having a floor scrubber and a sweeper is this. I can lay on the ground and it's clean. I can get up and I'm not Filthy. Wanna play derby? No! Bang! Well, it's getting pretty dark, but I think we're gonna call it a day, but we got some new equipment showing up in a minute here. I see it coming down there. Yep, we got a second one. This is exciting. I'm thinking he can just leave the truck and take the excavator home. Yeah. Or he can leave it all and we'll get more vehicle take home. He can have the bourbon. Yeah. I, it's gonna be hard for me to part with it, but. I think it's a fair trade. Yeah. Ended up getting a 2019 336 cap. We actually bought this site on scene just looking at some pictures. I think the case over there is lonely. And she really needed a friend. There, now they can keep each other company. Which one do you guys think we're gonna like better, case or cat? As of now, we really like that case. Well, now that we got some daylight, let's go pair some apples once. I haven't sit in the cat yet versus the case, so this is gonna be my first time. Yep, I would say it feels like an excavator. I'd also say I have no idea what I'm looking at over here. I don't know why I've never done this before with our other machine, just extend it all the way out. That's a long ways up there. I think that's taller than the shop. We got ourselves a mini crane. Let's go see what we can wreck. This one's a little bit louder than the case, I noticed that. Oh, the ground's pretty frozen. Let's see what we can wreck. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. That mamma jamma rips through that pretty good. He's bringing this dirt back down in here. 
So one thing that that cat has over this case, or it came with it, is called 2D control. So you can kind of select grade or do grade stuff. So you're perfect with GPS or whatever, however that works. So that's what Brandon's kind of fooling around with now. I don't know. I don't know how that stuff all works. This case does not, did not come with that. I, it could be added, but it did not come with that. But overall, machine to machine, I think they're about a horse apiece, flip a coin. They both do the same job. They both, they're very comparable size machines. 336 CAD versus a 350 case. Both of these machines are awesome for sure. And I don't know, whoever invented excavators, they're one smart cookie. Because the amount of stuff that you can do with these things is just unreal.